Hi guys, welcome back to Chaz's No Bullshit Reptile Advice. Uh, it worked a charm, the uh, question depository, everyone's been asking their questions. I've now got a little cache of them that I can go back to, uh, which will make my life so much easier, so thank you ever so much. Today's question comes from Tom K. Hi Chaz, what's your honest opinion on the new laws coming into play in the UK regarding housing snakes? And what would you personally enforce if it was down to you, given your knowledge and experience on the majority of species kept? Thanks for the videos, really enjoying them, and you've really opened up my eyes to a lot of species. Tom. Right. Kids. Turn this video off. It's not for you. Fair warning. The new law that's coming in is a total clusterfuck and will implode on us catastrophically. And shops have been thrown to the fucking lions on this. I am telling you. Right. The Americans, you don't know what's going on. We've had this new set of laws come in called the AAL, Animal Activities Licence. Our last bit of major legislation, Pet Animals Act, was 1951. So this is a raft of new legislation to try and update and bring into the modern era reptile keeping in its professional guise. So... We know that the AAL has been in its planning phase for four, five, six years as far as I, I'm aware. And the head of our lobby to uh, hold up our end is Repta, the Reptile and Exotic Pet Trade Association. So their job, um, as paid for by the major wholesalers in the UK, is to lobby on our behalf, visit Brussels, visit the UK Parliament and hold up our end. OK, simple enough. Yeah, right. So. Let me put it to you like this, right? What was the head of Repta doing for the last two years and for the last at least six months immediately predating the imminent uh, publication of the AAL? What was he doing? Well, he was making a rescue centre. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. See... You're the head of our lobby. And you personally have took on the creation of a rescue centre. You've been the head viv chucker, wirer, floor painter. You've had your son involved, you've been doing a bit. You've been very, very vocal on your on your social media accounts about working six days a week, 18 hours a day on this rescue centre. You went on a podcast, Reptile and Chill. Good podcast, by the way. Um, and same again. Oh, yeah, six days a week, some weeks. 18 hours a day, some days. Sleeping on a camp bed. Yeah. It's been hard graft, but without the support of my wonderful backers, this would have all been impossible. I must be the only person in Christendom sat fucking screaming when I'm listening to this, thinking... Right, let's look at this another way around. We, the reptile guys, we run Asda. The dogs and cats, they're Tesco. Fish, they're little. Yeah, in the picture, exotic mammals, they're Aldi, right? I run Asda. I'm the one who decides what happens because Asda's my domain, my speciality. So it comes down the pipe from gaffers. Hey up, there's a new law coming in. We've got to completely change the way that we sell food. You're joking. I'm fucking not joking, no. It's going to be a nightmare. Oh, bastard. Right. All right then, cheers, cock. So off he goes. And I'm sat ruminating over this new stuff that's come out and been said no. and I walk out of me supermarket as the where all reptile people are and I see that the the trolley park's looking a bit dated and a bit tatty people are just leaving them strewn everywhere all over the car park you don't put them back well, I think bollocks to this I'm going to talk to my mates the suppliers who supply Asda I'm going to see about getting some funds together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work six days a week, 18 hours a day, making the best trolley park you've ever seen, where no trolley park will ever be left, unattended and unloved, and shall be provided for, for 
future provenance. Right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build my trolley pole. And then customers would come every now and again and they'd say, Hey, up, Chaz. You heard about these new laws coming in? Going to change the way that we uh, sell food. I know, yeah. So, what are you doing about it? Well, I'm just a bit busy a minute. What do you mean you're busy? I'm just making this trolley pile. What do you mean you're making a trolley pile? Where trolleys were getting left everywhere, on love light, and they needed, well, rescuing. And they needed a state of the art trolley pile that they can park the trolleys in that looks fabulous and is a great statement about Asda. Yeah, but Chaz, what fucking good's that if you can't sell any food? But it's a really nice trolley park. I can't believe you're having a go at me. It's so unfair. I've spent six days a week, 18 hours a day, making this trolley park. And you're now telling me you don't even appreciate my hard work just because you can't buy any more food. Well, I think you're a rotten set of bastards. That is the level of fucking common sense that has been applied here. Who the fuck at Rector, on the board, whoever, who talks to the head of Rector, okayed him, volunteering his time, six days a fucking week, to open a rescue centre when the AAL is coming, the Animal Activities Licence. He's now come out that... Whilst he's pissing about on social media, this head of the PIF, Pet Industry Foundation, or whatever the fuck it's called, who was the, the overarching leader for the pet side. <coughs> Chris has been saying, oh, I, not, oh, he just doesn't listen to me. I've tried and he just doesn't listen to me. Do you know what? If I had a job as important as dealing with the legislation of the whole of the fucking reptile trade then that might be my primary focus. And considering that's what I'm paid for, and is my fucking remit, then that is what I would do. <sighs> I know, I'm such a philistine. You know, we just sit moaning. And what do you do that's so positive for the reptile trade? Hold people like you to account. That's what I do. I hold you to account because nobody else does. Everybody tucks their dick and runs. They're scared to say to somebody who they perceive to be in a self-appointed position of power, you're a tosspot, you got it wrong, desperately wrong. Your priorities have been so off fucking piste, you're not even skiing anymore. What the fuck were you thinking? Two years in the formulation of a rescue centre, six days a week, 18 hours a day, Sleeping on a camp bed at night. So that you can open a rescue centre. Well, what fucking good's that? If the AAL's been getting formulated. If you haven't been listened to, get yourself down there. Bang the fucking door down and be heard. Bollocks to being, oh, well, we've all the proper channels and democratic process and all this shit. Get it fucking done. It's your job. It's what you're paid for. If you're not capable of doing your job, step aside, let somebody else do it. Because for your wage, we can find somebody else to do it. It's ridiculous. What a fucking situation we're in. And now we've got a, shot, a group where people like the shop owners are desperate and fucking asking questions. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What are we going to do? Fuck's sake. It's like, well, we're formulating an action plan based on... How many of you get fucking shut down, get put through the ringer, get destroyed? Because we are reactive, not proactive. It is impossible for us to come up with an action plan prior to the fucking sky falling on our heads. So, every private reptile shop in the UK has now been thrown to the wolves. They have been, the local councils, have been given this new set of rules depending on how much of a set of jobs with they are will determine how many of us get absolutely screwed and thrown to the wall um it's 
it's a clusterfuck. I don't know <clears throat> how it's going to work. Everybody who produces more than a thousand quids worth of animals potentially needs to be licensed. So that's every dog breeder, cat breeder, or cat breeder, can all the works. The amount of new licensees will be exponential. My council has two inspectors for all the shops. We're supposed to have two inspections a year. Last three years we've had an inspection a year because they're too busy. So, what a brilliant idea. Let's do all this new legislation, give it to them, and just watch it all implode upon itself. The next trick I'm waiting for is them tripling or quadrupling the license fee. I've seen that some places have seriously increased the prices. <laughs> so that's the next step. Um, then, also, I mean, also, back on this fucking rescue, it, it's also doubling up as a training centre. Funnily enough, for councils that will now be dealing with the new legislation. So at which point, do I think that this rescue centre was a truly altruistic fucking way of doing things? No, I do not. What I do think was, there was pound notes seen. You can get some training money here. Get them in. Get them charged. Charge them a wedge. Buzz in. Because the shape of reptile dealing will, will change. It will change. And what amazes me is the wholesalers that back him to the hill at Reptor and pay his way and have probably given him well over a million quid over the past uh, past 12, 13 years in both combined costs and uh, remittance. I just am absolutely amazed. For 30 plus years, these shops have been the backbone of this hobby, have built this hobby up and created you. The only reason you're in the position you are in is because of us and the service we provide to the public and now you have allowed a man to fuck about for two years making a rescue center when he should have been dealing with the AAL we're in a position where we're sat not knowing what we're supposed to do and the answer that comes back is we don't know either we're just gonna have to see how desperately bad it gets for you and then we'll think of something. So Tom, in answer to your question, <coughs> in Yorkshire we would call it arse uppards. It's all the wrong way around. Don't make any fucking sense. Um, with regard to the new laws, specifically regarding snakes, which is what you asked. So length is now two thirds the length of the snake. The viv length, that is, two thirds the length of the snake. Depth is one third the length of the snake. Don't have a problem with it. Don't have a problem with it. Yeah, we're probably going to need to manipulate some of our stock come January. <coughs> but it's workable. It's doable. Now they've removed the upper, the, the height um, limit, which would have made major problems for our racking systems. That's gone. So actually, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. We're, the, the, the livestock will probably have to shrink 10, 15% to be in line with, with what we need to do. Um, it does create problems with giants. Uh, and that's another issue. So, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a bad chest. And getting this riled up about this subject probably isn't the best thing. <coughs> excuse me. So, if we're working on two thirds, one third, 15 foot snake now needs a 10 by 5 viv. That's a huge viv. Impossible. How many snakes regularly reach 15 feet in length? Female African rock, green anaconda, Burmese python. Probably not an Indian, but retic. So, we know how many have been produced in the UK. We know what kind of problems they have caused. We have also already seen a major file sale with two or three of the major breeders within the UK selling off their adult stock and people are fast asleep on it. Oh, look at that. It's a great deal. It's like, not a fucking great deal. They're selling it because in a year they can't sell it. Because if they're, they're professional breeders, they're going to fall foul of the new laws, which means that, that every one of their adult breeding female retics would then need 10 by 5 vivs. Do I find it coincidental that they are having a fire sale at this moment in time in the UK? Absolutely not. Um, and it is what it is. Asshole's going to asshole. Expecting any different would be naive. So, you're not going to see any more giant snakes in UK shops unless they are huge going concerns that can afford to put those sorts of vivs in, we certainly can't. Moreover, I wouldn't want to sacrifice that amount of square footage 
for a display snake when I can fit X amount of three, four, five foot snakes or examples of larger snakes in its stead. So yeah, and that, that, that will go for the larger lizards as well, monitors, iguanids. It does have a complex, uh, it, 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 it gets a bit complicated for shop pets, people who are currently displaying the giants, displaying the caiman. They're going to have a bit of a rough ride. But in truth, you're keeping a fucking giant species. <coughs> if the mechanics of it are okay for certain things, then, you know, what they're looking for is uniformity, a way of rolling it out across all species without having to have caveat after caveat after caveat after caveat. They're trying to make it uniform. Yes, the giants don't need 10 by 5s <coughs> but they also don't need 6 by 2 by 2s either. So, there is middle ground. You see, the argument I see is, oh, they're just going to kill in a corner and not use it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but, fucking hell, I've got four and a half foot rat snakes here in three foot tanks and they're like killed up in the size of a dinner plate does that mean that they don't use the rest of the beer? no of course not you know um so yeah there is for the giants there is a middle ground there should be a caveat for the giants what would i change caught if you gave me the keys to the kingdom tom what would i do <coughs> license giants wouldn't be a dwa it would be the start of a new license. Um, people see it as the thin end of the wedge. I don't. I don't. The problem that you've got is that if we start thinking about giants, and we've been banging on about giants for three or four years with regards to the amount being produced, it is unsustainable. There's wholly too many uh, mainland retics and the normal sized Burmese being produced. As a result, there are more animals produced than there are suitable homes. This will then become even more compounded as this law sets in, for the shops anyway. And then obviously long term, we're wanting to see these sort of standards in, in private hands. Where do we go long term with those giants? Production can't stay at what it is. It simply can't. <clears throat> We've got a, at least a three year delay from where we are now to the problem truly here and production was rife up until probably six months ago I expect it to take a downwards turn now <coughs> because all the big breeders as I've said have had their fire sale shit their pants and got rid of the giants um, so it might take a couple of years for people to work out what they're doing but moreover once they realize that the Ponzi scheme is broken and that the animals they've just invested in now are essentially worthless then that will become problematic um, where do we go? Three years from now, those baby snakes that are cute as a button <coughs> will be the 13, 14 foot. They're going to need the big babes. Are we going to end up with more of them being dumped? Are we going to end up with more of them being rescued? Um, there's a lady called Joanna Ray Adwinkle and Jez Adwinkle who run the Midland Giant Rescue, who travel the length and breadth of the country on their own dime to rescue giant snakes. When we were pushing the head of Repta about what the um, provision for giants was, we got very um, sound bitey responses of, uh, uh, we, th this is a center for all species, not just giants. Blah, 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 blah. Um, having already stated they're doing a DWA room, they're doing a crocodile room, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're doing the other, which are, I all know are his personal interests. So, and, and, and another shop owner said, respectfully, very respectfully, because he is a respectful guy, called Jules, and he said, well, wouldn't it have been better to contact the existing uh, rescue centres and say, what are the top 20 species that you are having to rehome on a regular basis so that we can <clears throat> make sure that we help uh, take on some of the burden um, because that would have given a very different outlook there wouldn't have been the need for a DWA room hots to you Americans or, 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 or a crocodile collection either because he stated quite rightly you know I rescue the, 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 the venomous the, the crocs go to world of crocodiles or whatever it is so what's the need 
And the answer is there isn't one. When pushed on, well, what provision have you got? Well, we'd happily take anything up to 18 foot. No. After the AAL is introduced, according to the current legislative structure of the AAL, what's the largest snake you can take? 12 feet. What a fucking genius. <clears throat> so, two years in the planning, the rampant and rife breeding of giant species, and I think, what was it quoted, 400 vips or something totally ridiculous like that. Um, and the biggest snake that you can take post AAL is 12 foot. Yeah. So when we heard that, we then said, well, how about you siphon off some of saves that I'd like close to £100,000 invested? Could some of that not been set aside to bolster the infrastructure of the giant rescue so that we maybe have a specialist arm dealing with the giants? And the reason that that's pertinent is <clears throat> to everybody, it seems, apart from the Reptor board, who is active within this hobby and actually has a finger on the pulse of what's going on. We know that the Giants are going to be a fucking ticking time bomb over the next few years. And yet, it was almost laughed out of court, that suggestion. <laughs> you know, can't possibly do that. Why don't the Giant Keepers raise their own funds for their rescue? Well, how much did the bearded dragon owners donate for the beardies that will be rescued? Or the boa constrictor owners donate for the, all the commons that are getting mass bred that you're going to end up with in your rescue? What was their contribution? Maybe if we could see a breakdown of species, from species to species, donations towards the construction of your rescue centre, maybe we could understand your argument regarding retics. Actually, what happened was you got backed in a fucking corner and didn't have an answer, and little Mr. Stroppy Bollocks came out to play and show his face. And that's it. We're dealing with somebody who hasn't planned properly who has spent two years building a trolley park rather than fucking dealing with what's going on. This is our problem as it's faced now. <laughs> I would license giants. Take it out of the common folks' hands. We've given you the opportunity to be responsible with it. You failed. Uh, you have mass produced them. You have sold them to all and sundry. There are wonderful giant keepers out there. There are also dickheads out there. <clears throat> in possession of a very, very large, very, very powerful, wholly inappropriate reptile. And when it becomes apparent that that investment in a snake that matched your curtains, or looked like your carpet, or seemed to have every positive about its pattern from nature removed and turned white for some reason, is worthless, then what we're going to do is we're going to find them getting dumped we're going to see people desperately trying to shift them onto anybody, so even less appropriate people could be end up keeping them. Or they'll take them to the vet to be euthanised, where the Royal College of Veterinarians, more than likely, will keep a record of all the euthanisations per year, and suddenly turn up to their AGM and go, do you know, we've had a 700% increase in giant pythons being euthanised this year. Do we think that people will be asleep on that? Do we think that the general public won't care? Do we think that the general public won't give a shit that they're getting dumped left, right and centre? Of course they fucking will. And do you know what? They've got every right to care. And when the aunties are jumping up and down saying that we're cruel bastards, in this case we are. What have we done to protect the giants? The head of our hobby, the head of Reptor, designed the, like, the UK's biggest rescue centre, bar none. His provision for giants, fuck off. Everything north 12 foot, no good. You tell me, is it fit for purpose? What's the single biggest problem area of our hobby? Giants. Oh, pythons, are, there's loads of. Boas, there's loads of. Beardies, there's loads of. But they are manageable. Boas probably to a lesser extent. But royals and beardies, fucking too right. They're widely regarded as beginner species. Anybody can have them. Giants? Really? And we're not going to provide anything from them. UK's largest rescue centre. We're not going to provide anything. 
this is the sort of shit that we have to deal with in this hobby. It riles me up and it fucking pisses me off. And it's why the kids weren't supposed to watch this video. Probably going to end up getting taken down this. But I'll put it up and those of you that see it, you're wiser for it. <coughs> because as much as I'd, I'll have a row with people, sticking my head above a parapet when nobody else has got the balls to do it means that I'm liable for getting my head blown off. Even when it is the truth. Everything contained in this video is my opinion and not the opinion of snakes and adders. I am entitled to my opinion. I am entitled to tell you what my opinion is. So, there you go. <laughs> See you later.